right, it's time for the driver's review of the 2003 Corvette Z06, also known as the C5 Corvette, C5 standing for fifth generation. So Corvette fifth generation C5. I've just driven from Clearwater, Florida up to Chicago, from Chicago out Route 66 to Los Angeles. And I'm on my way home right now from Los Angeles, driving down US 19 in Florida, just coming down from the Florida Panhandle. So first of all, let's talk about a GT car and a sports car. So what is a sports car? A sports car is a high performance car. Could be a sedan, but usually a coupe or a convertible used to drive fast. Ideally, you want maximum performance, great for short jaunts, going out and spending an afternoon uh, flogging the tarmac or going taking a drive to your local country club with your golf clubs, uh, perhaps two people doing that, and in general having a good time. The sports car is also great for the track, and ideally something that you want to have a lot of fun with on a track day or an autocross, or just driving through the uh, hills and vales, uh, going over hill and dale, enjoying the car working in the corner. Now a GT car is a little different. GT originally standed for Grand Touring or Gran Turismo and was used to designate cars that were designed to drive over the Alps. Originally from the GTO, uh, the Ferrari GTO. You may recall that car. Uh, now we're some 38 to 40 some million dollars. But basically a car you could drive from Italy up into Switzerland or Germany or France over the Alps in comfort and style with great performance. More of a long distance tour, not a sedan, but something where you could enjoy the performance, make maximum use of the performance in spirit to driving over challenging roads and doing it in comfort and style. So, is the Corvette Z06 a GT car? Is it a sports car? Is it both? Well, let's review. So, after having driven it about 6,000 miles, I've become pretty familiar with the car and its good and bad points. First of all, the pluses. Great performance. The engine is beautiful. It's got a lot of low end torque. I'm driving right now at 70 miles an hour. I'm turning about just under 1800 RPM. So it's great for mileage. It can spend all day just driving and having a good time. How does it handle in the corners? Well, it's got great bite. I spent it and drove it on the Los Angeles Crest Highway. And believe me, there were some very challenging corners in that little stretch of road. I could probably have given it a little bit more than I did, but considering the steep cliffs going off into oblivion, I chose that discretion is a better part of valor. But I can tell you, uh, the long wheelbase, the wide wheelbase, and the low profile, and the suspension really helps giving some bite into those tough corners. You know, I could crank it over, I could feel that suspension working, car was staying relatively flat in those tight twisties. Not a lot of body roll, not a lot of motion, that held really well. Comfort. It's not a bad car for touring. I've been sitting in this seat for almost two weeks, either this one or the passenger seat, and it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. I don't need to see a chiropractor. Comfort factor is pretty decent. So I'll give us some good marks for that. The car is a great looking car. I love the looks, I love the color. I've got that medium blue metallic. It really shines, it looks fantastic. I've got that, as you can see, the black interior. 
while many people knock in here for being cheap, I'm not going to argue with that. We've certainly got enough plastic instead of leather coated uh, components in the interior. But even with that, uh, it's a pleasing looking interior. So it, I think it gets good marks for that. The stereo system is decent. Um, so overall, good car. <laughs> Car mileage is great, as I mentioned, with the RPM uh, at the engine speed in sixth gear. Boy, you can get some great mileage, and that certainly helps the pocketbook, especially in today's day and age. Track car. Now, I have not yet taken this car on the track. I have ridden in a C6, excuse me, the C5 on the track. I've driven a C6 on the track. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal track car. Um, I've been in a passenger in a C5 on the track and it really held its own. One thing I forgot to mention and shame on me for not doing that is the trunk storage on this Z06 is really quite good. Here's a list of everything I've put in the car it's really pretty substantial and frankly I was surprised at how much I could put into it with a little bit of careful packing. So huge, huge kudos to Chevrolet for making a sports car or a GT car that can haul a lot of stuff. Wind noise, now I've gotten up to 70 miles an hour. There is some wind noise coming from both windows, primarily the passenger window, some from the driver's side. Car's got uh, 60 now, 64,000 miles, 57,000 and change when I left. And that is definitely an annoyance. Believe me, listening to that car for 6,000 miles, uh, that wind noise, it gets a little tiring. The whine you can hear as I hit the accelerator, or actually even on cruise, I let off on coast and that goes away. Now the wind noise in the cabin was much worse. I went through and installed Dynamat and Dynawire in that trunk area. Completely cut down a, a din or a concussion uh, type noise, there was a reverberation that was making it very uncomfortable. It was actually giving me a headache. So I've gotten rid of that noise. But just the general road noise, that wine coming through, not so good. The other drawback to the car is the temperature inside the cabin. It gets hot. You've got this long sloping windshield, you've got this glass in the back, glass on the sides. The car gets hot and there's a lot of heat that gets generated, I'm assuming from the exhaust and drivetrain that come up through the car. I had my AirPods in here on the center console, pulled them out, the case was hot to the touch. Not burning hot, but very warm. I pulled my luggage out of the back of the uh, trunk area, and it was very warm after a day's drive. Good air conditioner, does keep the temperatures down, but even with that, I found at the end of the day I needed a good shower to wash off that sheen of perspiration one acquires. Now one of the problems I had, I went through a car wash, a brushless car wash where it sprays water, and I got wet from water spraying in through this crack where we would hear driver's noise at the higher speeds. Right now I'm going at 80. That wind noise has died down a bit. It's definitely missing on the driver's side. Uh, excuse me, I'm going at 60. And I'm, dead. whoops, getting off the road. So I'm going at 60 miles an hour casual cruise. The wind noise has died down. I can tell you at 80, I am hearing wind noise on both sides of the car. But the water coming through, not good. In a stiff rain and seems in the wind in certain directions, I was getting wet and my son was getting wet on the passenger seat. So that window leaks a little. Is that something that can be adjusted out? Yes, but should it be there to begin with? No. Um, 
The other problem I'm running into, I don't know what it's from, but I definitely still get a little vibration. I've got new wheels and tires that have been balanced. Before, I had the tires balanced, and uh, there's still just a minor vibration. I don't know what it's from. With the new wheels and tires, that same vibration is still there. So at the end of the day, I'm definitely feeling fatigued. I ran into with it is sitting so low to the ground in Los Angeles I was having a very hard time not scraping the front spoiler as I would exit uh, parking lots I would have to approach you know coming in like this I'd have to approach at an angle get a wheel dip first because otherwise I was scraping that front spoiler and there are some streets where you just can't do that uh, where they've got you know drainage uh, Impressions in the road as they come to a, you know, a, a plus intersection. So that was problematic. One of the big shortcomings of the Corvette for a Grand Touring car is lack of storage in the whole uh, engine, or excuse me, whole cabin, the whole cockpit. So, one, there's no map pockets. So, as driving Route 66, where are we going to put the map and the guidebook to guide our way? You got to cram it between the seat and the uh, door, uh, which is great to open the door and it falls out. Uh, the center console is really tiny. Uh, there's only a few things we can get in there. Uh, you know, a phone and then uh, a couple pairs of sunglasses and that's about it. And then um, one drawback, which we overcame, is there's only one cup holder. And we found this cool little device. One of the guys on the Facebook Corvette forums pointed it out. I went on to Amazon and bought that. I don't know if you can see that here, but um, this device has worked out really well and it can hold two cups. So that problem is overcome. So that problem with the storage just in the front seat for the driver is really difficult. The other difficulty is you've got this high shelf behind the driver. and so I can't reach back, for example, to get um, a bottle of water or a snack. If it's behind me, there's no way. Now, in a typical car, you know, you've got a typical coupe, you know, front seat, back seat. You can reach down behind and have snacks or, um, you know, your drinks in a cooler on the floor behind the driver's seat or behind the passenger seat. You can just reach down, reach over, and reach in and grab those. So with no map pockets, small console, uh, well the other thing is no place to really put a phone. I ended up putting it between my cup holder device and the, uh, with the ashtray and that held it fairly well. Um, so that, but that's only my phone, you can't put two phones there. So with my son, when he was where would he put his phone? I could stick mine there. He'd have to hold on to his, stick it in his pocket. And you can't really access a back pocket when you're sitting in one of these cars. So that covers it. Again, just another mark against it uh, for long distance touring. Doesn't change the fun from driving it though. Um, it's a sports car around town and just a nice twisty road. Or at the track for that matter. So after the drive, would I call this a good sports car or a good GT car? I would rate it as a sports car, definitely not a GT car. Is it a good GT car? No. Is it a good for a day tripper? Absolutely. Those little annoyances don't build up. If you get a little hot at the end of a long journey, hey, it's a sports car, you're going to give away a few things. Great sports car. I don't recommend it as a cross-country tour.